hi good evening all of you hi good evening all of you hope everything is clear you are able to see the screen and uh, you are able to get my voice and you are able to uh, see me also and today we will discuss about the some key questions related to the cleaning validation and there will be the uh, different sessions and this will be a short maybe 10 15 minutes not more than that so uh, i have decided that you know we will take some key questions about the uh, specific topic so i will choose the topic even you can also share some questions that also i will take up during our uh, to discussions okay so this is just a brief about uh, the, the things and what we are going to discuss so basically i identified the uh, three top questions of the cleaning validation so the first question is is it required to evaluate the variability in residue levels during cleaning validation so basically nobody is focused on that but uh, we will discuss about this uh, with respect to the variability in the residue levels during cleaning validation and let me tell you one thing that whatever i am going to discuss about the questions and answers all the answers given on the basis of the guideline requirement i will share the guideline reference uh, which guy from which guideline this answer is taken i will share the details to you if you wish you can go through the guideline in detail so don't worry this is not the my own thoughts whatever i am going to share about the answers the answers are exactly taken from the guideline okay so the first question what i was discussing about the is it required to evaluate the variability in residue levels during cleaning validation second question is with respect to during cleaning validation do we have to wait for swab and rinse samples to be approved prior using the equipment for production and the third question which will be considered for today's discussion and that will be during maco means maximum allowable carry over this maco calculation do we have to use a safety factor depending on nature of the different formulations so these three questions i considered and uh, uh, next week we, i will consider some uh, different three questions and like that you know we are going to discuss on every week about the key questions and reference to the actual guideline expectations okay so let us start to our uh, uh, discussion on this uh, topic before going to discussion it's just a disclaimer that whatever i have taken it is from the guideline and all so if uh, uh, guideline or literature surveys and all so if you want to implement it so please refer the current version of the guideline the reason is you know today uh, i am preparing the training material training presentation to all of you to make you aware about the answers of these questions and all but this video will be for long term long time available in the youtube so the point is <clears throat> uh maybe after 6 months 7 months whenever you are referring this the guideline may change or may update or there may be some additional expectations of the regulatory requirements so that is the reason you need to refer the current version of the guideline so this is the disclaimer i just want to tell you and now let us move ahead for the today's first question and today's first question is is it required to evaluate the variability in residue levels during cleaning validation till now many companies many people are focusing about the variability during the process validation only but now this is a question come up and answer is in line with the us fda the answer is yes the answer is yes we need to evaluate the variability in residue levels during cleaning validation and what are the expectations of the guideline this is what the expectations are of the guideline the as per the fda expectation when variable residue levels are detected during cleaning particularly for a process that is believed to be acceptable one must establish the effectiveness of the process and operator performance this is what the exact expectation of us fda what does it mean it means that when you are performing the cleaning validation and you are testing the residue and you are getting the value of the residue and you come to know that the the residue values are you know variability is there in the residue uh, whatever we are getting the results or values of the residue we are getting after the testing so if in, it is the there and if you are following your validated process but still you are getting the variable uh, residues are detected in that case you need to establish the effectiveness of the process effectiveness of the cleaning process and 
operator performance this two point you need to again evaluate or establish okay so when you are having the variability in the <coughs> levels of the residue now what is mean by this it means that if there are suppose some uh, in between there is some OS or maybe some OT in one of the results of the swab or rings whatever you are having or uh, you may have some um, you know sudden excursion in the results so this type of results are called as a variability in the results so if you are having the uh, variability in such a results of a residue or traces then you need to establish the effectiveness of the cleaning process and the operator performers who is engaged in cleaning operation so this is what the expectation from uh, FDA so you need to focus about the results variability between the uh, uh, residue levels between the two, three different batches and also the different locations what is the variability is there any variability between the uh, intra and inter batch that you need to verify this is what the uh, expectation by the FDA from this requirement further the FDA expect that appropriate evaluations must be made and when operator performance is deemed a problem so you need to have some appropriate evaluation you need to do and you come to know based on the evaluation that operator performance is the problem means it is related to the operator means because it is a manual cleaning so in case of manual cleaning operator performance is very very important so if you come to know that there is a problem with respect to the operator performance then you need to do you know you need to have some more extensive documentation and training may be required so you need to further train further focus on this um, upskilling of the operator so that this uh, problem can be solved or rectified this is the expectations by fda hope you got my point and i am not fast if you feel that i am fast don't worry you can reduce the speed and you can go through the understanding of the questions clearly okay now the second question is during cleaning validation do we have to wait for swab and rinse samples to be approved prior using the equipment for production what does it mean it means that suppose equipment is clean dried after that the swabs are taken maybe swab or rinse samples are taken the samples are given to quality control and quality control is going to test these samples so my point here is the question is whether we need to wait for the results then only we should use the equipment for production or we can directly go for the production so this is what the question and the answer is given by the apic guide on this so as per apic guide during cleaning validation studies it is recommended to wait see this is exactly in line with guideline no please re remember this as per apic guide during cleaning validation studies it is recommended to wait for completion of all plan test prior to release equipment for further use so it is mandatory it is required by the apic guideline that you need to wait for the results for during validation okay means while performing the cleaning validation studies you need to wait for the results why it is required because it may be used for further uses like if it is fails you will be able to properly investigate it so that is the reason you need to wait for uh, the results this is what the expectations and very clear that you need to wait for the results hope you you are getting my point right further what is explained by the apic guide whether it is a regular practice so that is what also it is explained because many companies are routinely performing the uh, swab or rinse testing during each change over so that is also clarified by the apic guide what apic guide clarifies in routine operations means what after validation is completed okay so after validation when you are doing the routine operations routine changeover and uh, when you are cleaning it and you are testing the each changeover but uh, by you are testing each uh, uh, equipment swab or rinse uh, uh, to check the carryover and all for routine operations the release of a equipment pending testing results could be done so you may not wait you can you it is not mandatory to wait for the test results of a swab or rings whatever you are doing during routine operations not during cleaning validation performance okay but yes 
during routine operation you are putting that control to monitor the swab on drains to ensure the uh, drug uh, api residues in the equipment in that case you can go ahead no need to wait for the results like you know this test what are the tests some verification monitoring and all you need to go ahead no need to wait for the results however what then the expectation is what if you are not waiting for the results then responsibilities and circumstances for using the equipment pending release should be defined within the company so company should have the internal sop and where it has to be clarified in detail about the uh, how this uh, will be taken care during the uh, routine operations how alternate controls will be there maybe visual and all that need to be clarified in the company's internal policy or the sop that is what is explained by the apic guide hope everyone is clear with this question many people many companies ask this question so i thought that you know let us discuss about these questions okay the next question last question again i am telling i will not take much more time just the last question now during macro calculation macro means maximum allowable carry over the people who are involved in cleaning validation they may be aware about the macro concept okay so do we have to use safety factor depending on nature of the formulation so when you go through the calculation there is the safety factor is considered and the safety factors earlier it was recommended uh, of that you know for r and d some different factor is there injectable or ophthalmic different factor is there oral you can go through this table you know different factor is there topical product again different factor is reco was recommended earlier was recommended earlier that is the reason i cross it it is not required now it is not required now so the question is during macro calculation do we have to use safety factor depending on nature of the formulation the answer is no so what and who is clarifying this this is clarified by the pda guideline parental drug association because whatever the different requirements were it was a traditional approach but as per the pda technical report number 29 you can refer the guideline for details the safety factor applied to a minimum daily dose is typically 0.001 means 1 1000 regardless of the route of administration so whatever type of the product maybe it's a topical maybe it's a injectable maybe it is ophthalmic maybe it is oral solid doses whatever is the mode of the administration route of the administration you need to follow the 0.001 factor for the calculation based on further it is recommended by fda that based on a risk assessment a more stringent or less stringent safety factor may be applied as appropriate for a specific situations sometime what happened you may feel that uh, uh, by following this you are not getting a more worst scenario and all and you you need to go for more worst for example example also given by pda for clinical trial materials where dose is not fully established what happened the product is under clinical studies and all so dose is not established so you will not able to identify the dose right smallest recommended daily dose so due to that what happened you can use the more stringent safety factors during calculation that is what is it explain but if you are engaged in the commercial manufacturing and where the uh, you are manufacturing different doses formulations then you can have a common this factor 0.001 and further you can uh, evaluate the risk base whether you need to go for the more stringent factor or not but it is not the expectation in current scenario if you are using the same factor for different doses units then it is perfectly okay there will not be any questions or the doubts only thing is you need to evaluate based on the risk based approach that is it required if you are getting the uh, if are you if you are evaluating the um, uh, product cross crossover or cross contamination from product a to product b change over in line with the guideline requirements and all so it doesn't uh, will make any sense so that is the reason you need to use a common factor hope this point is clear uh, in line with the pda technical report number 29 so i i am just explaining all the points three questions i explain with the answers reference to the guideline similar way next week we will have the uh, 
next questions okay so thank you thank you so much for your kind attendance and kind presence if you have any questions you please put in the comment section so that if these questions can be taken in the discussions i will definitely take the discussion otherwise i will reply there itself okay if the question is clear then i will take separate uh, uh, similar way i will prepare it to make you all people understand about the questions because from questions we learn more than just reading the guidelines so that is the reason i expect all people to raise your questions concerns about the topic thank you thank you so much and ensure all time compliance thank you